Roger, uh, uh, Joe and Glenn and I, when uh, uh, Roger was tw 20 years old, so Roger's been here 17 years. No, uh, pretty soon be 18. 18. Yeah. 18 years. And uh, the young man uh, actually grew up with Ben and I, and, and he did, and, and he's like one of our own. All these young men are like our own. We're, we're so proud of them, and, and I mean that. Uh, most of you have heard about Roger's situation uh, uh, this past uh, year or so, and uh, since it's an evening with the cathedrals, I, I just want Roger to share his testimony with you, let you know where he is at, at this time in his life. Roger. I'll be glad to, George. It's such a great joy to be here. We've said it so many times tonight, but you know what? Truthfully, if we were asked by somebody to judge our top five places to sing, Prestonwood and Dallas in this area would have to be in the top two. If it, if it wasn't for Strawberry, you might be number one. But, <laughs> You know, I've learned a lot of great things in my life, but I'm thankful for one thing I learned. I learned that the Holy Spirit is portable. You can take the Holy Spirit with you, or you can choose by your attitude to leave him at home, and I'm glad that we've got a bunch of people here tonight in Dallas that brought the Holy Spirit with them. It's like church service in here tonight. Amen? Praise God. I was looking out over this crowd, so many different kinds of people. No two people look alike. No two people raised alike or believe alike or think alike, but... We have a few things in common. I was thinking about that as I watched you tonight. Some of us, we all will share a few of the same things. I was thinking, you can go as far back as, as grade school, where these kids are. I remember when I was in grade school, everybody in our class shared one common phrase. You would hear this phrase every six weeks, and it struck terror in our hearts. Your report cards are coming out tomorrow. I dreaded hearing that word. I was thinking, too, you know, if you find somebody that you love and you want to spend the rest of your life with them and get married, you will eventually, we will all hear the phrase from a pastor or a justice of the peace, I now pronounce you man and wife. If you drive like I drive, you will one day hear the words, license and registration, please. <laughs> if you work for the Cathedral Quartet, one day you will hear the phrase, anybody seen my teeth? <laughs> Good, Roger. Here, 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 Glenn, give them to me. I'll show them to him. <laughs> but for some reason, humans, I don't know why we're like this, but it, you're probably the same way I, way I am. Humans don't, never think that you will hear the words, you got cancer. Cancer is always something that happens to other people, right? Well, most of you know that I found out in August of 95, the first Monday afternoon in August, that we are all other people. The lumps that I found on my neck just a couple of months earlier were diagnosed to be leukemia, chronic lymphocy lymphocytic leukemia. The doctor said, Roger, I can't cure it. I'll give you a 60% chance of living 10 years. After 10 years, no guarantees. I felt like my world stopped at that moment. I'll never forget that day if I live to be 100. I, I had everything in my life that I'd ever dreamed of. I, I had dreamed some pretty big dreams for a kid. I can remember uh, all the dreams that I dreamed up until that point. Really, every one of them had come true for me. And I'm not talking about the things that the world puts a lot of value on, like cars and lands and houses and stuff like that. I've been blessed, but that's not what my dreams were. I dreamed about having a wife that I could live the rest of my life with and just have a beautiful, godly relationship. You know what? God said yes. I've been married to my dream girl for 15 years last December. I've, that's all right. It's a, it's, a shame, it's a shame that that's rare anymore, but it's becoming increasingly rare. You stay together. But I have been married to my dream girl that long. I've got two beautiful children. I asked God to give me a family. And I've got two beautiful children that the sun rises and sets in for me. I'm an idiot father and make no bones about it. I've got the perfect job. Here's the dream I dreamed when I was a kid growing up in a town of 265 people. Salute. <laughs> Never even had a gospel concert. I had the audacity to ask God to let me make my living playing with a gospel quartet. Let that be my full-time ministry. You know what? That wasn't too big for God. He said, sure. And then he gave me a bonus as only God can do. He let me do it with my favorite group, the cathedrals.
I have been on the road. Being on the road with these guys is truly like being on the road with your brothers and your grandparents. It's a great, it's a, you, you get back over there and quit celebrating. And you just shut up and testify. <laughs> and into that perfect world came cancer. I've had all the negatives that you associate with cancer. I've had uh, chemotherapy. I've had all the bone marrow harvesting and the bone marrow tests and all the pain, all the stuff that you associate with that being negative. But folks, even with all that, I have to stand in front of you and tell you that this has been the best season of my life. This has been the most wonderful, blessed time of my life. And I know you may be sitting out there thinking, well, Roger, how can you get on stage in front of all of us and say that your life has been greater since you got cancer? I don't understand it. But the thing is, I have experienced the grace of God in a way that I truly, being a Christian all my life, though, I didn't know existed the grace of God like it's been poured over me. I honestly feel like it's just been poured over my head like an ointment. I have found grace and strength that I didn't possess before. And God has somehow turned this darkest valley into the most blessed time. I wouldn't trade it. If they said, Roger, we'll take away the cancer, but you've got to give up your walk with Jesus that you've gained, I keep the cancer. Praise God for that. Amen. Praise God. The cancer, the cancer was in my bones. I was 11% cancerous on the day that I was diagnosed. Eight weeks later, I was 45% cancerous. And I remember thinking that day, I'm not going to beat this. This is it for me. I went back home from a lot more prayer and, and just resting in God. And it was time, just rolled around so quick, it was time for another test. And I really dreaded this one because I knew I was at least going to be 45%, maybe more. I didn't want to go, but I went down to Houston, MD Anderson, and I took my test. And I went home and waited for the results. And try to get this mental picture in your mind if you can. It was a Thursday morning, about 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm in the shower. I take a shower every Thursday morning at 7 o'clock. <laughs> Just a few short days ago now, boys. You don't have to tell us. We know. Before, before I had even got out of the shower, I hadn't even pushed the shower curtain back yet, and Debbie, my wife, is in the bathroom. She said, Roger, you just had a phone call. I wish you could have taken, but I've got a message to give you. I said, well, what, what's going on? She said, Dr. Keating, that's my cancer doctor in Houston. Dr. Keating just called and said the, the results came back from your test, and I just automatically drew up. I was dreading to hear this. She said, according to their latest test, they say instead of 45% cancer in your bones, as of this morning at 6 o'clock, you got 0% cancer. <laughs> in your bones. Yeah, yeah, Roger. Praise God. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's see that again. How's that dance? <laughs> Something to dance about, brother. I just, I'd be honest with you. I just did a dance of joy before God right then. That's hard for me to do for a couple of reasons, folks. First of all, I'm a Southern Baptist. <laughs> you can get kicked out for that. And secondly, like I told you, I'm in the shower. I told Debbie, I said, I can see the singing news headlines now. Roger Bennett, healed of cancer. Fool breaks neck in shower. <laughs> can you imagine how embarrassed you'd have to be to stand before God and say, God, I appreciate the miracle in my life, but I kind of broke my neck in the shower. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know what? I never want to leave the stage, but what I don't talk to you people, in a crowd this size, there's got to be somebody here with cancer. There's got to be somebody here who's facing an uncertain future. And you're sitting out there thinking, Roger, I'm really, I'm really glad for you. But what about me? I've been given three months to live. Where's God now? Or I was given a year, a year to live 14 months ago. I'm on borrowed time tonight. Where's God for me? Well, folks, don't misunderstand. I'm not up here celebrating and dancing and acting ignorant because God just decided to touch me. I appreciate that. But the thing that I am so excited about tonight, and it will change me for the rest of my life, and the reason I have joy in my heart is I found out that God is God in the valley just as much as he's God on the mountain. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah.